All right, welcome to Culture Couch Live. We've got Mel, Carly, Jez. How are we all today? Good. G'day, Rizzy. How are you? Rizzy, how are you? Very, very good. You are looking very relaxed there, Rizzy, with the background, the palm trees. In the I've back. actually got a bit of a sore back, so I, I've, I'm on a little bit of a lilo-type couch set up here with a little bit of uh, foliage in the background, so mm. I can't I can't sit on a normal chair, but uh, thanks for age. the... It could be age, Paul. Well, Jess, thanks for the care. I, I really appreciate <laughs> I really appreciate you guys checking in on me and caring about me. I, I think... It's very nice of you. And I know, Jez, normally you're a bit more aggressive than you are today. So I appreciate the fact that you've taken a little bit of time out to ask how I am. So thank you for that, Jez. And on that, Carly, uh, you're very excited to become a newly accredited Insights Discovery partner. Now, <laughs> being the caring person that I am, I'm going to hand over to you, Carly. <laughs> to take the Culture Couch live for today and explain why I'm talking like this to all of our listeners. Thank you. Yeah, we are very excited because now at PBD we are an official Insights Discovery partner. So Insights Discovery is the profiling tool that we use in a lot of our sessions. Um, and it, and I guess, Jess, I'm going to ask you that question. Why do we love Insights and why do we use Insights? Um, in, I've been delivering insights for about I don't know, 13 years. I, I, I came across the <clears throat> tour when I was in the UK and working for the England rugby union team. And so I, I went to Scotland for a week to do the training, the same training you did last week. And it's just a fantastic tool because it's really practical. It's really easy to use. You get an amazing report, a 22 page report. And it talks about the red, green, yellow and blue, and it makes sense to people. And so I've used it with companies for the last 13 years and have done probably tens, tens, perhaps even hundreds of thousands of reports over that time. And I've very rarely had anyone complain about it. So it's just a really practical tool. There's aspects to it which show how you behave um, at work and then how you behave under pressure. So it's a, it's, again, it's helpful in terms of understanding where you might go when you start to get angry. I or think, emotional, I which I, I never do, but sorry, <laughs> sorry, for, sorry for talking while you're interrupting there, Paul. But, so, but <laughs> that's, that's that's normally Carly's job. Carly normally interrupts as as we're talking due to her profile. But anyway, I'll 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 stop now. And I think on that, so we're going to do a little bit of an exercise today, Carly, aren't we? So we're going to put because we've got to explain the insights um, discovery profiles. We're going to put ours up, and we've actually got four different profiles on the screen now. And we're going to do a little bit of an exercise, probably to, Murph, to your point, around how practical it is. So, Carly, again, I'll hand over to you and you can sort of explain what I'm talking about. And then we can maybe pick holes in each other and um, strengths and weaknesses. No, no, we, 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 we'll, we'll reinforce our strengths, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that so, direct feedback, Murph. Yeah. So you can see here, this is the insights discovery wheel for the four of us who are talking to you today. Um, so it talks about our preference for our colour energies. So when we are in our normal conscious state at work or at home, um, where do we generally lean to? So you can see on this wheel here, there's four main colour quadrants and you can see them in the very middle of the wheel there. So you can see the red in the middle, yellow, green, and blue. So they're the four quadrants that we talk about. Can you about. hurry up and get finished with the explanation, Carly? Uh, she's we still need a bit of detail here, Jess. Just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that Jared is in the red quadrant. Um, so up here, Jared Murphy in the director quadrant. So Jess, I want you to tell our audience about red energies and uh, what we your- just. Just Thanks hurry up, just energy. hurry up, Carly, and get it done. Like, oh, oh, I've got other stuff to do. I don't need to be sitting around here listening to this d- disorganised presentation that you're currently giving. <laughs> Very rude. But I don't right, know. So, what's that, Mel? I don't know what we're even doing yet. Talk us through it step by step, please. Okay. So, Jez has a preference for fiery red energy. So, what that means is he's very task-focused. He's also quite extroverted. Um, 
So he he sits on the think the feeling versus thinking quadrant, um, which means that when that energy shows up, he likes to get stuff done. He likes to get stuff done quickly, and he doesn't want to muck around with all the niceties. He just wants to get in there, know what to do, and then move on. Jez, have I captured that? Yep. Okay. Let's go to Mel. Yep. Okay. So Jared is being very true to his profile right now. So if we move across to Melina, so you can see she's in the blue quadrant. So our blues are called our, it's called our cool blue. So Mel, what can you tell us about people with a preference for blue energy? So blues are generally analytical. They're, um, they're very precise in what they do. They like lists. They like organisation. They take lots um, of time. They do. They like to ask questions, Jez, and have considered responses. <laughs> we haven't got time for that. And they're more cautious in their approach as opposed to a red. And what, what about what about what about the green sitting over there not saying a word? He hasn't, he hasn't <laughs> spoken. What any chance you might contribute to the conversation, Paul? I'm just listening to you guys and <laughs> I, just want to, I just want to support you as much as I possibly can. And I think All right. that's so Paul is showing us. And I've just cut him off as per my energy. So I'll <laughs> keep working on. Um, so Paul is showing us his um, earth green energy. So people with earth green preference focus on relationships. They're very relationship focused. They tend to be more introverted. They're very caring. They're very empathetic. They're very supportive. So they take time to build relationships. They spend a lot of energy making sure people are okay. And well, they never um, get stuff done. But they are quite slow to speak, Rosie. So when we need to involve you in the conversation, what do we need to do to help you? <laughs> and so just so everyone's really clear, we are in character today, which is good. So this is what I like. <laughs> so the purpose of this culture cast live, we just want to stay in character of our colours, which is which is great. So you're right, Carly. So Mel is sort of the analytical, um, Jez is getting stuff done. Carly sort of the sales, look at me, look at me. The peacock sort of thing. So in the, in the bright pink jumper, yep. the bright pink jumper, etc. Et um, I think that I think that in answer to your question, Carly, I might answer it a little bit different because this came up, Jez, with you and I, didn't it? I mean, you yeah. asked me in one of the one of the sessions we did, and I'd done a lot of um, profiling, but hadn't done anything while I was sort of coaching. I think we did maybe a little bit at Melbourne, but that. And I remember I used to get tired at the end of um, the week when I coach the game of footy and Jez, Jez, maybe you pick up the conversation oh, around when we do the profiling. It's still one of the great questions for me of all time in terms of AFL football. I just said to Rusey, I was looking at Rusey's profile and I just said to him, how the hell could you have coached an AFL team with a profile like you've got? Like it, most of the coaches we come across have historically anyway, have tended to be, I guess, uh, red, yellow, red, blue, 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 red, sort of, haven't they, Rizzi? You, you've been in football a long time. Yeah, yeah. That sort of more task-focused, get yeah. stuff done, attention to detail, sometimes can be a bit controlling. And so I, I looked at Rizzi's profile and went, wow, that, that is a really unusual profile for a, an, a, an AFL coach, particularly for such a long period of time. And I was really fascinated as, as to how you manage that, Rizzi. Yeah, and it's probably talks to, because we can't, I mean, their profiling session go for a fair while, don't they? Two hours. We've only got 15 minutes. But I think what we would say, even though Carly, Mel, Jez is a preference and we're trying to get across what that preference is, you know, Jez is going to be nice and direct. Mel is going to be really thoughtful. Carly's going to have a lot of really good ideas. And I'm trying to be, you know, as calm as caring. But the responsibility of a leader is to jump out of the quadrants. And I think that's why the insights discovery is such a good tool because it tells a, a really good story. And, and when Jez sort of asked me that, I said, yeah, I've been in a red environment for so long. You know, the, the environment of AFL football is quite red. So you have to get shit done, particularly on game day. But for me to be out of the green energy into the red energy does take a lot of effort for me. You know, and that's, that really answered my question, Jez, when I used to say yeah. to you I was really tired on game day. Um, so maybe, maybe we'll go around and say, well, a strength, Mel, your strength is probably being more analytical what do you find tiring when you're in, I guess, the yellow, your yellow, your opposite quadrant? What, what do you find tiring as an example of that? 
So I like to, as you say, sit back and question and have an informed decision. I like collective wisdom, all those things. So when I move into the yellow to present and to come out as um, a very extroverted, spirited person, it takes a physical energy from me. So yeah. when I'm in a room with a lot of people and it requires me to come into that yellow, it does actually drain a lot of energy. So I do feel tired at the end of that. I need time to step back and I need time to reassess and recoup and then go again. So if you told me you're going to be at a party for the next 48 hours, I would rather die. Believe it or not, guys. <laughs> so, but I think it's a good um, discussion around opposite energies too. So, yep. you know, we see this a lot in exec teams and teams overall. So if the four of us are in a team together, obviously um, Rosie and Jez are opposite preferences. Mel and I are opposite preferences. So we're all going to like receiving information and communicating with each other in different ways. So it's yeah. just a really good opportunity for us to be mindful about that. And I think, Mel, a really good example of that is even just our Culture Couch Lives that we're doing right now. So before Mel started with us, you know, all of us just jumped on, discussed a topic and then decided what we'd talk about and we'd go for it. Then Mel started and she said, look, it really helps me if I know what the topic's going to be beforehand, if I've got a bit of time to think about it and plan it out. Would you mind if we start working through the topic earlier so that I've got some time to think about it? And it's just a really good example, Jez, of, you know, the different styles of the people in your team and the different ways they um, need that information and need that workflow to, you know, to get the best out of everyone. Yeah, and I think we, we've got, we had a question uh, during the week for Culture Couch Live, which was tell what makes a great CEO or a great leader. And yeah. self-awareness is the first one, isn't it, really? Like, 100%. if you... Yeah. If you cannot receive feedback if you don't listen to other people if you're not self-aware then you can't be a good leader and and the profiling piece is fantastic we're like we love it because it's not understanding yourself and then once you understand yourself you can then communicate more effectively with with the others so i know if i'm i'm sending an email to mel or i want to have a conversation i send her an email first and then i follow her up the next day after she's, she's had a chance to consider it whereas carly i can just pick up the phone so hey, you need to be in Geelong in 10 minutes. Get yeah. moving. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have a bit of a chat. And, and whereas Rusey, again, Rusey wants to be more considered, more planned. He wants to know how it affects the people around him. But mm -hmm. so I think understanding yourself, understanding others. But the piece I love most about profiling is when you put it all together. And yeah. so like when, when Carly put our profile up today, you know, coincidentally, really, we're, we're really balanced. We've got a perspective from each quadrant. But sometimes when we when we go into a team, like it's fascinating. You, you can have really strong biases to one to one quadrant um, or a couple of quadrants, and, and so you might have a super extroverted team or a super introverted team, or you might. So nice people employ in their own likeness, and so you have a group of people who are really similar. Like, and so I, I love that because that you can almost predict how the session is going to run before you get in there based on the on yeah. the team profile and i think i think that's where we can provide enormous insights into into performance around how does your team look from a profile perspective and what do you prefer to do and what do you avoid doing because mm. if you look down the right hand column you know mel's least is red so she she avoids confrontation at all time whereas Ruzi's is yellow so he, he prefers not to get up and speak and that's why i wondered Ruzi, about mm. how how you actually manage the energy of of being a AFL coach Carly I don't know it's pretty scary really because Carly's our CEO and she's she's low in blue so we, the organization could fall apart any given day and and I need to be careful about making sure I'm empathetic and, and look after the people around me and not just focus on the job so so I think that that whole putting it all together as a team is oh, I, we, we just love doing it don't we I think that's one of the reasons we decided to do the culture couch on it because when we looked at the the wheel today and and we exaggerated the first part of but what it what it shows you is there's no right or wrong and i think that's the thing that really hits me all the time there's not a, there's not a good or bad profile it is what it is yeah. but the story of insights discovery is explaining as you said murph how do we how do we speak to mel and we've been going through expansion ourselves over the last sort of three or four months and and the profiling's helped us enormously getting through 
you know, we don't call them necessarily uncomfortable conversations, but having those conversations right, I love your, your term, Murph, right way, right time, right place, yeah. because I'm going to have the conversation directly with you and you often pick up the phone to me and go, Rusty, what about this? And even though we're different profiles, I think we, we worked in the same industry for so long, we operate similarly. Mm. But I think it's a really good example to people watching the Culture Couch now. There's not a right or wrong. Yeah. It's just a good discussion to have with the four of us because we are different from a profile point of view, Carly, aren't we? And it's, and it's just good to exaggerate sometimes the behaviours. But, but to sort of say, to be a good leader, and you asked the question before, Murph, that question we got, what's a good CEO and what's a bad CEO? A good CEO gets in and out of their colours. Yeah. understands when to be in their preferred colour, in your case, Jess, red, or my case, green. But game day, I've got to get out of green. I've got to get into red because the players want solutions on game day. The players yeah. want information. During the week, I can be more caring, more analytical, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's a really big part of it, Carly. And it's, yeah, that, that, that was think... killing Carly then, having to listen to you for so long without actually getting to speak. But I was working on it very hard, Jess, and I waited <laughs> until he finished and then you voted in instead of me. Um, but I think it's, you know, there's lots of teams that we speak to, and Mel, we had one a few weeks ago, and they said, I just can't understand why I can't connect with these people. Like, it doesn't matter what I do, they just don't seem to get it. And when we worked through the profiles, we saw that there, there was a cluster of people on one side of the wheel and then just one individual over the yeah. other side. And even just having that, you know, discussion about, oh, you know, you think in different ways and your energies come from different places. It was a real aha moment for them in terms of, okay, so what do we need to do to connect better and to work yeah. around it and to get the solutions we need? And they're the kind of things that are really beneficial from a team point of view that can help you Um you know, work through any of the situations you have. Yeah. And I, it think takes, the other it takes, I was going to say, it takes a lot of energy to shift in and out of the colours. As you say, Riz, it can be exhausting and, and it makes you uncomfortable. But in order to be a good leader, you, you have to be prepared to be uncomfortable yeah. in order to operate in, in a different mm. energy. And that's yeah. fundamentally yeah. The, the, the most important thing about profiling is don't let who you are be an excuse to behave badly. Or, or to do the right thing, you know. So don't don't let your profile be an excuse to behave badly. So I think that that's that's the most important thing to take out of it. Like you just you just can't default to the one spot all the time because you, you can't be a good leader if you're going or even a good teammate if you're doing that. Oh, no, on that, I, I can move a good way to finish. But I'm going to ask each and I, I'll finish off with it. But Mel, what do you find the hardest to do? Like you touched on it before. So we've got to be really conscious of our strengths. And I think we've, we've touched a bit on our strengths. But, but what do you find is the hardest thing to do? And I'll ask Carly and, and Jess the same question just to finish off. I think for me that, um, that confrontational piece is one that I go blue to work out. So I'll say, what are the facts? How do I approach yeah. something? And then move into the red. So I actually use the strength, one of my strengths, to pull into the other one, if that makes sense. And then it allows me to have that confrontation, but yep. I do it from a blue place, if that yeah, makes right. sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So you'll get all the data together just so you know that you're really comfortable to have that conversation. I love that. Carly, what just about yourself? Do it, Mel. <laughs> um, well, mine is absolutely patience, Ruzi, because... I'm, yeah. I'm already thinking about the fifth step down the chain while everyone's still talking about the first one. So I'm ready to keep moving and jump in. So patience for me is the hardest thing. And I think that's just going to be a, a lifelong lesson that I need to work on, if I'm honest. Uh, that's good. That's good. And Murph, yours? Uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, Carly's peacock earrings that she's got going on there, like the <laughs> yellow, bright yellow, look at me, look at me earrings. But anyway, I just... Oh, um, mine, mine is. Do you like is, them, Jess, or not? Fantastic, I like them. Yeah. Uh, fantastic, yeah, really good. Um, mine is meetings starting late, not being organised, waffling in meetings. Like it drives me insane. I just, I just want to, just want to leave. To be frank, so for me, it's about you know being structured, being organised, getting stuff done, and having the conversation. So I've got to keep practicing, listening, taking the time, care you know demonstrating empathy because I, I am caring but sometimes i in my yeah. quest to get something done i i don't show that yeah that's no, good and i think what, what i like about 
performance by design in our group now, and I think you probably noticed it. I love the fact that when I just shut down, I'm like, oh, I just, you know, like, and then you asked me, Ruzi, you haven't, you haven't spoken for a while. That's that's probably a really good example of you understanding, you know, when I'm disengaged. I think that's a really good thing, how we can help each other. So I think we talked about that in one of our meetings just recently and one of our other colleagues, I said, look, I'll calm you down, you know, if you don't, if that's okay. And that, yep, that was fine. And please, if I'm being too quiet, just say, Ruzi, you haven't said anything for a while. Yeah, what have you got to say? So that's probably a good example of how we work as a team through the through the profiling as well, isn't it? Yeah, and it's really important because green, group, particularly greens, right, they take they they need, they want to answer a question thoughtfully, and yep. so if you ask them a question on the spot, they'll take a bit of time to think, and and often the reds or the yellows will jump in and answer on their behalf, and and we don't get the benefit of their of their yeah, observations yeah. and and the and what they're seeing. So it's it's a great lesson for extroverts. To, to be to be comfortable in silence to allow the introverts time and space to give an answer and if we can do that then everyone has a voice and then and then part of being part of a, a team is that belonging and having a voice and yeah. so that's it's as hard as it is for me personally uh, you know I've learned over a long time now that you have to create the space for people to have a voice yeah, hundred percent. No, that was awesome. So hopefully, people have learned a bit about it. But yeah, I'm finished. I'm trying to go, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Mel's ready to go. Mel's <laughs> got some other stuff to, to get to quickly, and Mel's got to analyze the P and L. So we and I've got to go. And, I'm going to go and give Tammy a hug. So. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is an awesome. It's an awesome tool, and I love it. I mean, I, I again, I didn't get much involved playing footy, but it's certainly good. And I, I think the benefit of team, even on this call, we all respect each other. We all respect each other's profile. We now got an understanding of strengths and weaknesses, and as a team, it makes a massive difference. So, thanks very much. Thanks, Mel. Thanks, Carly. Thanks, Murph. Uh, and we'll see you all next week. Mm-hmm.